Listen, I've traveled many miles, crossed many bridges, flown with the crows, crawled and climbed mountains. It's time for you to vote in this week's Athlete of the Week contest. Whoa. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you may happen to be tuning in. I am Brian Carpenter, sports editor of the Meriden Record Journal, and we're coming to you on Wednesday evening with our ninth edition of the Fall Record Journal Athletes of the Week. We have a new set of winners, we have a new set of nominees, but we're pretty much here at the end of the line, you know, we're getting down to the end with tournaments. Thanksgiving football is ahead. Looks like we have a couple teams going to the playoffs, but as far as the Athlete of the Week contest goes, what we bring you tonight is pretty much the end of the line for the fall. So listen carefully, going online and voting when we give you our nominees. Hopefully we got a good vote total to go out the door with here in the fall. All right, let's go back to where we were last week when we had our slate of week eight candidates. If you remember, for the boys, we had Maloney wide receiver Victor Marquez, Lyman Hall running back Randy McFarland. And from Wilcox Tech Soccer, Mr. Giovanni Solis, who scored the game-winning goal for Wilcox in their CTC championship game against University Prince Tech. We got the votes, added them up, and our winner is Victor Marquez, Maloney Football. Sean and Pete caught up with him on Monday as Victor and the Spartans get ready to face Platt on Thanksgiving. That's Sean Krofsik here with uh, Maloney Junior football player, Victor Marquez. Victor, welcome. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to meet with us today. You know, what, is, what does it mean to you to be uh, at Record Journal Athlete of the Week? I mean, it's pretty important. I'm really not all about the stats. Uh, team guy. Love just the record, winning. Yes, and you guys have done a lot of winning. Uh, tell me about what's, what's made this team go on this eight game winning streak and, and continue on and for such a great season. A um, big part of it, um, playing, doing practice like it's a game. Everybody practices hard every day. Um, our defense, big part of it. Um, one of the best defense in the States to me. Um, and our offense is clicks. How much does uh, preparing against your defense during practice help you get ready for game action? It's it's not the easiest thing, but it definitely helps us because when you're reversing one of the best defenses in the state, every day in practice, it's easier in the game. Tell us a little bit about yourself as a receiver. Um, just, I go out there and catch the ball. Yeah. Would you, would you describe yourself as kind of a possession receiver or a flashy receiver? or um, how, how, What type of receiver would you say you are? I mean, I just... Get first downs, do anything that coach needs me to do. Tell me about the biggest win of the year. What was that so far to this point? Um, I think it was Connor, definitely. Um, defense showed up big time that game. Um, offense was doing good. Yeah, it was a 12 to 10 win. Um, you had a big catch down at the end. Tell me about that. Um, just, we drew the play up and then I. I kind of knew it was coming to me. Cause, I don't know. Just had to catch the ball. That was my one job. Yeah. Um, is there one catch that uh, that was a big one? Is, is that the biggest one you've had of the year, or is there one that that stuck out to you? Uh, I think I was one of the biggest. That saved the drive, keep it going. Mm -hmm. and then we ended up scoring on that drive. Yeah. Um, has this season exceeded your expectations this year? I mean. I kind of knew, but like, we, we talked amongst each other, and we were like, this is going to be the year. So I feel it. I felt it from the beginning. We all have, and I think this is the year. Well, tell me about a little bit yourself, uh, what you like to do off the field. Um, just, um, <laughs> football is my only sport, so I just practice for football, get ready for football, do my great job. So, all year you're, you're ready, you prepare for the games like this. Yep. And you got a big one coming up on Thanksgiving. Um, what's it like playing on Thanksgiving? I mean, the atmosphere is it's fun. It's nothing like it, but you know, just got to treat it like a regular game, like we were playing anybody else. Coming to it, just how we would any other game. 
Sharani, thank you for catching up with Victor uh, today. You know, it's it's not easy to, to get a hold of Victor in the sense that the guy's hard to cover. He is, as we go into our Thanksgiving Day games, our area receiving leader. Now, it's, it's really close between Victor and Tim O'Shea of Southington and Elijah Felton of Platt. Uh, Evan Mansfield and Michael Jeffrey are, are right there behind him as well. But those three guys are so close, it's remarkable. And I wrote their stats down here on our dry erase board because it is that close. Vic Marquez. 49 catches, 596 yards, 9 touchdowns. Tim O'Shea of Southington, 48 catches, 569 yards, 8 touchdowns. And Elijah has 43 catches, 532 yards for 7 touchdowns. Oh, baby. So Thanksgiving will help uh, settle up the wide receiver race. For right now, Victor Marquez is the man, and Victor Marquez is the Record Journal Male Athlete of the Week for Week 8. Who was our girls' winner? Well, if you recall, we had... From swimming, Miss Olivia Fournier of Southington. I got to say, we mentioned Olivia broke her own uh, school record in the 50 free. She did it again Saturday in the Class Double L qualifying meet. She brought it down to 24.74 seconds. She's a number five seed in Class Double L. Good for you, Olivia. We also had Samantha Iannone of Sheehan Volleyball. Sheehan had great runs in the postseason. Sam was nominated from Sheehan. And also, our third nominee. SEC, Most Valuable Tournament Player, Megan Klein. Megan right on time. Megan Klein for Cheshire. They are undefeated. They're going into the, the uh, Class Double L semifinals tonight against rival Amity over in Naugatuck. We want to wish Megan Klein luck along with the rest of the Cheshire Rams. For now, our winner, our Female Athlete of the Week for Week 8 was Wham Bam, Sam I Am, Samantha Ione of Sheehan Volleyball. Shauna Pete also caught up with her. Sean Krofsik here with uh, Sheehan senior volleyball player Sam and Owen. And uh, thank you so much for, for greeting to meet with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations on being athlete of the week. Thank you, thank um, you. Tell us what the season just, just came to an end. What do you have to say about the year as a whole? Uh, I think that the year was definitely an exciting one. Um, coming in during tryouts and you know coming into senior year, I was extremely excited to um, you know, be named to not only captain of the team, but to you know lead a bunch of like a bunch of my friends, you know, into many victories. I don't know. I just I was definitely thinking that we were it's going to be a good group and we were going to have a really good year. Um, the highlight of the year was was that the conference tournament where you guys had two big upsets. Or yes. What, yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, definitely. Those two games were definitely wow. the most exciting that I've ever had in my entire career playing volleyball. Um, going into the Laurelton Hall game, um, I feel like we were very mentally prepared um, for the game. We knew it was going to be a tough game, but um, we just were not ready to give up. We were not gonna give up easy. Um, I definitely think that we put up a fight, and um, once we won that game, and I knew we were playing Hamden, which we had previously lost two games to, um, I knew that was probably going to be one of the biggest games that we've ever played, and um, during the whole game, it was just adrenaline definitely was going, and when we won, it was just probably the most exciting time that I've ever experienced in my high school career. So. Yeah, that was a great run. That was a great run. Yeah. Um, well, tell us a little about yourself as a player. Um, yeah, so I've been playing volleyball since I was probably eight, and I started at the Park and Rec program that we have in Wallingford. Um, and I've always, you know, loved volleyball. It's always, you know, been my one of my um, sports that I've really loved because I've done basketball and softball too. Um, but. Coming into high school as a freshman, I actually um, broke my ankle, so I wasn't able to try out, but um, the coach at the time, um, Coach Grace McCarthy, um, she let me join the team, you know, because she's heard, she was uh, has heard from other players, you know, about how I can play and stuff. So, um, yeah, so when I got my boot off, I, um, you know, started hitting and started playing up in the net a lot, and that's kind of where I fell. So I'm like a middle and outside hitter now. And I really love it. I really enjoy it. What well, uh, individually? What, what do you feel your best match was this year? Um, my best match I think was definitely that Hamden game um, in the SEC tournament. Um, I don't know. I definitely felt that um, I had more kills than I did in previous games, and. Yeah, it was just an all-around really exciting game, so. 
what, what does it mean to be recognized? Oh, to be recognized, it just, it means a lot. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, I just, all the support from like my coaches and my teammates has really made a big impact on me. And so I'd like to thank all my coaches and teammates for that. Um, but yeah, it's just, it feels great. <laughs> Samantha, thank you for speaking today with uh, Sean and Peter. Congratulations on being Athlete of the Week. Sheen has done very, very well here in our Athlete of the Week contest in the fall. Will we have some more Sheen candidates here in Week 9 in our season finale? Well, as a matter of fact, we do. Male candidate number one, Sheehan High School, running back, sophomore, Jordan Davis. SEC opponents, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, now that Zach Davis has graduated and moved on, on to Fordham, well, his kid's brother is coming up through the ranks, and as this season has gone on, Jordan has proved that he's, he is a good one, too. He had 111 yards rushing and three touchdowns against East Haven on Friday night. Sheehan won that game handily, 41-zip. With that win, they clinch. A playoff berth, they're 8-1. and one. They're going back to the postseason for the first time since 1995. Beautiful for Sheehan. Uh, they'll be in the Class M playoffs. They're going to probably be playing at home as well. We're looking forward to that. For now, Jordan Davis, 719 rushing yards on the season and counting. He is Athlete of the Week nominee number one in Week 9. For an Athlete of the Week nominee number two for the boys, we're going to stay right out on the football field. We'll go over to Cheshire and our man, Gentleman Jack Raba quarterback for Cheshire threw three touchdown passes on Saturday down in Bridgeport to lead the Rams to a 27-18 win over Harding. Good job there, Jack. Now, this was also a couple days after Jack officially signed his national letter of intent to play lacrosse down at Loyola. So Jack was busy last week. He had a very good week. Okay, and our final nominee, we're going to go out to the soccer field. We're going to go one more time out to Maloney. Why not? Because the Maloney Spartans had a great year this year and they capped it off with a great run in the class l tournament they beat bristol central to zip they defeated who came in next i'll tell you who came in next wilton came in next and they beat it, beat them two to one before falling to defending champ daniel hand in the quarterfinals on saturday night down in madison our nominee for maloney this week right here noah lopez noah scoring him two by two i like that line so much i'm using it twice noah lopez had both goals in the win against uh, wilton that was a that was a nice win for Maloney in the second round. Wilton had just defeated Wilcox Tech, the number two seed for Zip. They come back to Meriden. Maloney's waiting at Falcon Field. Noah Lopez puts in two. Wilton goes home. Maloney goes on. It was a great season for Coach Dave Parnes and his boys. Noah Lopez, Athlete of the Week nominee number three for the boys. Okay, we are ready to go on uh, to the second half with our girls nominees for week nine. And this was tough because, Pete, there were a lot of girls I wanted to get in, especially a lot of swimmers. Um, that I wasn't able to, to, to get in, but we're going to invite them to our brunch as Athletes of Distinction. Some, the, the four girls over at Lyman Hall, Nicole Sislo, Sarah Beveridge, uh, Christy Driscoll, Faith Gambardella, she was uh, a nominee earlier this season. All great years for Lyman Hall. They're competing in the uh, Class M meet this week. Uh, Julia Duzak from Southington, another fantastic swimmer. The girl we got to go with, Pete, you know we got to go with? How can we not go with her? Miss Elizabeth Boyer, senior, Cheshire High School. Tonight, Cheshire goes after the Class L Championship over at Wesleyan. In fact, I'm, once we're done here, Pete, I'm going to Wesleyan to see Liz swim. Number one seed in the 200 IM, number one seed in the 100 breaststroke. She leads the Rams as they go after the Class L title. They got a good shot. They have at least one swimmer in the championship uh, heat of every race. Good luck tonight to Liz and the Rams. Liz Boyer, she's on her way to Harvard. She was the SEC Swimmer of the Year this year. She's the two-time RJ Girls Swimmer of the Year. She's looking to go out as a state champion, both Class L and the State Open. She is female nominee number one here in week number nine. For our, our second and third girls nominees, we're going out to soccer. Um, the, the soccer tournaments are over. Our teams are out. Some teams had some good runs. We had a lot of teams with double-digit wins this year, including both of the teams who fielded uh, girls nominees number two and three. First up is the young girl, the freshman, Beth Arnold from Sheehan High School. We love this story. This is too, too good to be true. Uh, Beth is a freshman, uh, played mostly goalie uh, this year when she got in. Um, but on Tuesday, when Sheehan opened the Class M tournament at home against Ledyard, uh, Coach Rob Ulesman actually just said, hey, I'm starting her at four. We want to mix things up, get a little speed in there, a fresh look. And what do you know? Beth Arnold responds with not one but two goals, both in overtime, as the Titans defeat Ledyard. Two zip. They go on to advance and they beat Waterford two to one 
in the second round. Now, in that game, Beth was back at her old job at goalie. She came in in the middle of the game, helped seal that win. And her final nominee, we're going to Southington. Southington with Coach Mike Lenahan had a fantastic year. They were 12-4-2. They won a first-round game in uh, Class Double L. They beat Hall 1-zip before they lost out at Ridgefield 2-1 to one in the second round. Strong season. A lot of good players on that team. We're going to have a number of them, in fact, on our all-record journal team. There was one girl we didn't want to leave out. We want to nominate her as an Athlete of the Week. Fantastic season, fantastic career with the Lady Knights. She is Natalie Verderam. Natalie uh, has been a goal scorer throughout her career with the Blue Knights this year. She was among team leaders. In fact, I believe she was tied for the team lead with eight goals. She also assisted on five others for a good career and a good season. Miss Natalie Verderam, you are nominee number three among the girls. So that's it, Pete. That's It feels strange. We're coming to, to the end of the line here. That's it. The, the last of our 54 Fall Athlete of the Week nominees. That's a lot of kids. And it's such an impressive list. I think I'm going to go through it right now in alphabetical order. Nah. Here's what I want you to do, though. Please, our last week of, the, uh, of voting for the fall. Go online. Pete, we're going to put it up, right? Going left to right or right to left. My record journal com backslash athletes when you see the video the polls are open they're open today they're open Thursday Friday Saturday through Sunday you got all these days to vote takes a little bit to get online sometimes to vote I know but look at this slate of candidates great slate of candidates to vote for and remember all athletes of the week all RJ nominees all scholar athletes you're going to be invited to our best of the bunch awards brunch in June at which Mr. Jim Calhoun will be the guest speaker and Pete will be there doing a uh, I think interviews, Pete, on the red carpet. You are the red carpet master. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you for watching our Kung Fu movie edition of the Athletes of the Week. We hope you've been enjoying our shows this fall. We'll be back uh, with next week's winners and then in the, in the winter season, probably the very first week of January. Our highlight show, though, will continue uh, later this week and again the day after Thanksgiving. We're always busy. We never sleep. Can't you tell? I am Brian Carpenter, sports editor of the Record Journal. Thank you very much for watching. Be good.